Hello everyone, I'm your host uh, Jonathan Moline here and welcome back to another Jonathan Moline's interviews and today I got an amazing guest and good friend here, Whirlwind from Whirlwind Studios. Hello, how you guys doing? <laughs> Nobody's watching, it's just you and me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they will <laughs> once we uh, once yeah, they see the video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so, Whirlwind. What's up? Now, tell us about this exciting new album drop you just put out, like about a month ago. <laughs> well, it's been about two months ago now. Actually, it's August 29th, so it would be exactly two months ago. And the album Escape, my debut uh, electronic full-length album, uh, yeah, I released it. And it's been very good. It's been very good. So, uh... Yeah, I'm very proud of how that album turned out. Uh, it's a, a lot of the genres that I have, uh, you know, combination of like IDM, electronica, drum and bass, glitch, and even some ambient stuff. So, yeah, nice. it turned out pretty good. I'm really proud of it. That's sick, bro. That's awesome. Um, so anyone, if you want to check out Whirlwind's album or buy it, um... Did you put it anywhere for people to buy, Roland? Uh, uh, yeah, it's on Bandcamp, Spotify, and um, I should have it on iTunes if anyone still uses iTunes. But uh, yeah, Bandcamp is like my main source of where I have it listed. So yeah, feel free to check it out. I also have a, I have a full-length album stream on YouTube as well, so if you want to check it mm -hmm. out as well as Spotify, you can do that. I will link I will link all your socials in the in the description once this is out, bro. Yeah, right on. So, whirlwind. What uh -huh. got what got you into drumming and music in general? Oh, drumming. So, one thing that got me into drumming. Um, let's go back to 2015, and it's kind of getting around to that time of the year too when I picked up drums. Uh like around early september 2015 i remember one day i was like you know well bit of background i was getting into metal music like pantera slipknot slayer nice. metallica so i was listening to that music on my way to work uh when i was driving to the water park which was like 30 minutes away from my house so that kind of kept me uh interested in that in that sense is uh listening to that music and i always love the drums it's just like i like hitting stuff i ne i try i tried playing drums before because my father played drums and i learned a little bit about it uh but i never perceived it seriously and 2015 i like once the school year started i was like hey you know i was you know i was really destined to play drums again so I uh, asked my dad to see if he can get the drums out of the closet, and look, sooner than later, I started playing drums, and I start I self-taught myself for like two, three months, and then I started taking lessons, and then I took lessons for about a year, and now I've been self-teaching myself ever since. So yeah, that's Sweet. basically my foundation as a drummer. Sweet, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah. The passion of music is just so cool. Like when you, there's an old saying like, um, people who don't, people who don't make music, when they listen to music, they just listen to it. But when they see people who make music, who listen to music, we feel it a different way. We rock out tomorrow because we can hear every single note, and beat and phrase in every single song. Right. It's an old saying. We hear music differently. Uh huh. Now let's get I mean, to a lot the, of people. Go ahead. A lot of people translate music differently. <laughs> yes. Now let's get to the nitty gritty here. Explain your uh, profile picture, OC, there. Uh, so we're taking all the way from music to uh, OC pictures. So uh, me being me, I'm still a big fan of My Little Pony. And uh, I happened to want to make a new OC and... Like three weeks ago, I made an OC in Ponytown, 
named her Arky Freeze. And I just kind of made her as a quirky hippogriff. And, you know, I began, I just started to really love it more. So I started commission getting artists to do artwork for me. And, yeah. <laughs> so you say you're still in the MLP community. How long have you been in the community and what year did you start? Well, I've been a Peroni since 2013. Like, February 2nd is, like, the day I consider myself to be a part of this Peroni fandom. Uh, so way, way back into, like, Season 3 territory, tail end of Season 3. Um, yeah, so I didn't really, you know, at the time I was, uh, I didn't really make any friends in 2013, though. Uh, that didn't really start happening until the year after that when I started going on to Equestria Daily and, uh, you know, Skype calls and all that stuff and subscribing to a bunch of, you know, getting to know some of the YouTubers as well who put out brony content. And then around 2015 is when I started to really get into brony music. Uh, so, yeah, they're on out, like, since 2015. It's like... That's when I started like getting really, really, really active into the community rather than just watching the show or like liking videos and whatnot, but like getting to actually make friends. <laughs> cool. Making friends is always fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've made a lot of great friends over the years. Uh, you being one of them, I mean, <laughs> I've, been friends with, I've been friends with you since 2016. Yeah, 2016. I think I, think I still consider you like the longest friend like the friend i've known the longest i would say Varric because i've known him at the beginning of since 2016 but i don't really talk to him that much Varric introduced anymore. me to you yeah he was the one who introduced me to you yeah but yeah so that's awesome man that's awesome you you've been in the fandom this long and put up with so much stuff and then you 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 uh, became a musician and it inspired you to um get better at your craft but before that there i checked out your channel you've done tour you've been you've been in tours before with other bands uh kind yes and no uh back in 2016 i started playing on the worship team at my church and that was like I guess my first experience on playing live with the full band. I never really played with. Honestly, it took me a while to even play with like a full band, to be honest. But serving at church and worship was like my main output to playing drums live in a band. And uh, I've jammed out with a couple of people here and there too at the time. But uh, I never really played like my first outside gig. Uh, really not until like Everfree Northwest last year so it took me that long but hey it's better than never right <laughs> true and uh, forming a band is also difficult too because when you meet people in real life you can jam with it's it's fun and it's just like you can learn things from each other like I've had friends I've jammed with you know I'm still trying to get my band going and then coming up with a unique name for the band is also difficult too because there's a lot of names that are already taken so you have to do a lot of research um right like my group named silverwing militia that name has not been taken yet so until now so yeah and uh i will i've collabed with people before it's been fun like uh i get what you mean like it's it's hard you getting out there and getting yourself uh noticed and everything like that but as long as you're having fun that's all that matters mm-hmm yeah so now do you have plans to ever do more of this album you put out was more like a chill relax edm style but have you ever thought about getting more like putting a rock album out like into your your roots oh yeah that's so many ideas like that's so many ideas to have like a rock or even metal project to come along it's just like for me as a musician i struggle a lot with playing guitar and <laughs> i feel you on that knowing one. all that stuff so uh if i ever were to do it 
I would need to do it with, uh, you know, have like a huge like super group of band members or something. Uh, but I do, I am learning a lot of mixing techniques and mastering techniques for that kind of styles of music. Uh, so I would probably be like the production lead. So I would still consider it like my band, I guess you could say. <laughs> my band. <laughs> my band. Yeah. Yeah, that's radical, bro. Um, let's see. What else have you got going on? Now, what do you have any other future plans? Like, you got anything interesting else you want to do? Well, I mean, this whole year has been create, create, create for me because of the coronavirus stuff. And the pandemic, and, yeah. Yeah, so I've just been constantly creating stuff. I feel like I feel like if it weren't for this COVID stuff, I feel like Escape won't even exist. Or if it did, it probably would have taken a lot longer. Yeah. Uh, it's... That and, of course, the fact that I don't have a job anymore. But Me too. Um, but um, so right now I have a song that I'm hoping to submit to Ponies at Dawn, which is a massive compilation uh, label for Brony Music and Pony... Or, music dedicated to my little pony fan music so i want to see if i could get onto that if i don't get if i get denied it's no big deal i'm just getting my uh getting my feet wet into like different styles of music like this particular track i'm making is like modern drum and bass type stuff so like a lot of the drum and bass that i've made already it's like you know 90s stuff <laughs> nice uh, stuff stuff that's more stuff that's more complex but not that punchy so so that's one of the main stuff i'm doing the other stuff is uh you know just trying to get my feet and get my foot in the door into doing more electronic music i already have a couple of electronic ideas floating around and uh i want to say if i can try and do collabs more the thing with collabs is like you know, either the project lead has got to be very tight on things and get things going, or otherwise it's going to flop. So, um, collabs are like hit and miss, but I've been recording a lot of drums for other artists. So, that's like the sit rep of all the music stuff I'm doing right now. That's really cool, man. Um, and in the past, uh, you've done some, well, because, you know, I've worked with you in the past. Um, yeah. I've worked with you a lot, actually. Mm-hmm. Damn. I'm just... <laughs> um, I, you, I've seen you have done voice acting, you've done made editing, you've done some amazing comic work, and you've, you've been in different fields. You've tried different things. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing some kind of movie soundtrack or something original that... Have you ever thought about going out there... And maybe creating like music for like original comic though if everyone gave you a shot. Um, I feel like that is possible. I can do some. I can definitely do something like that. The thing about like you said, like soundtrack, uh, depends like what kind of soundtrack you're going for. For a comic dub, I could probably do something like that. Uh, for like a major film, I don't know if I can do something like that unless if it has like a theme that I'm used to working with mm -hmm. it's because uh the role of film scoring or uh sound or sound scoring is uh quite a different process than just like writing a song it really is based off the scene and the uh how you interpret that scene with uh music so but good yeah i feel like i feel like something like that it's it's doable i just haven't thought about it yeah well, it's, it, it is doable, and you have a lot of time to think about it. And once you – yeah, it is challenging too, but the thing is about a challenge, it's always good to challenge yourself to experience other things, to hone your craft and get good at it because it's about yep. hard work and determination and a little blood, sweat, and tears, literally, actually eventually yep. pays off in the end. You snooze, you lose. Exactly. Yep. So – what happens if someone was doing like a let's say a graphic novel and they needed some kind of like a a really cool soundtrack for a certain like theme and they gave you the theme by writing it down and that gave you the idea would you do it 
I think I probably would. But like I said, it like has to depend on like the kind of music I'm going for, or the kind of soundtrack or graphic novel they're going for. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. How long have you been doing YouTube? Well, I mean, I started my YouTube channel way back in 2011, just to upload random videos. And I didn't really start taking stuff seriously on YouTube until like late 2016, early 2017. Uh, yeah. Because I started doing I started doing drum covers, and then I started doing comic dubs. I even tipped into analysis for a little while, but I kind of got bored out of that. Uh, yeah, comic dubs. You and me have done a lot of comic dubs together. I think that was like one of the most fun things I've had. Yeah, we did a recent uh, one together. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, comic dubs is kind of like a good output. Do impressions, have some fun. Uh, um... Yeah, so drum covers has kind of always been there for my music, I guess you could say. Uh, but I didn't pick up electronic music until, like, about last year, like this summer. Of la or, like, summer of last year. So that's when I started mm -hmm. to learn a lot of that stuff, learn MIDI, learn mm -hmm. how to use uh, different uh, different instruments in a DAW or digital audio workstation. So that was a good learning experience. It took me a while to get all the things dialed in, but you know, you're always learning stuff every day. So I mean, hell, I mean, I still feel like I could have gone in and mastered my album a little bit better because I knew a couple of other techniques, but of course a product is a product that's already out. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to change anything. Exactly. So. Whirlwind, and there's one thing you forgot to mention. What's up? You're also an adrenaline junkie, because I remember when I first discovered your channel back in the day, you did POV, POVs on roller coasters back then. Oh, uh, yeah. I still want to do more of that stuff. It's just like, the whole pandemic, it's like, yeah, losing man. me from doing that. Yeah, man, I totally understand how you feel on that. Another thing, too, it's like, I kind of got... I don't want to say it got out of that hobby because it's kind of bittersweet. I've been into roller coasters for about 12 years. Uh, but I'm just not as interested in, in it anymore, especially when it comes to filming. Like, I guess if it goes to just experiences, uh, yes, I guess you could say I'm still into a lot of that stuff. But I don't know. It really all depends. I still need to buy more, like, more camera gear and more quali good quality camera to do that stuff but you know it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is <laughs> yeah man like we all start some where i've done like videos there's been videos of me being on theme park rides and too on my channel um you started youtube like two years after i did Really? Yeah, I started in 2009. Uh oh. I was 19 when I created my channel. I was... How old was I? 14 when I created my channel. Oh, you were just a little shit back then. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bro, like, uh... Like you, I when I created YouTube, I didn't. I just it was random crap. I didn't know what to really do. I didn't start taking it seriously more until I was like getting my like around twenty three or something like that. That's when I started. As I got older, I wanted to do more, better stuff. So, but I always mm -hmm. had a passion for filming and being creative. Yeah. So, do you got any more? plans for the future anything else like music wise or project wise that is interesting in your life uh say that question again sorry i got sidetracked 
Um, yeah, I said, um, do you have any more plans for the future, like music, projects, anything else in that matter? Yeah, I kind of already mentioned that, like short-term stuff. Uh, but long-term stuff, I want to... I want to see if I can, well, long term, it's kind of like the exact same thing. Like for terms of music, like I want to do like a rock project. I want to do more electronic stuff. Just dip my, uh, dip, uh, dip into different styles of music. Cause I feel like I can come up with, uh, I feel like if I do the same thing over and over, I feel like it will be kind of boring. So I always like to try and challenge myself. So, but uh, yeah, that's what it stands right now. It's good to hear that, man. It's always good to challenge yourself, and it's always good to do something new. Like, like with me, I come up with new shit all the time in my brain. <laughs> right. So but I keep my major projects. When I'm working on my major projects, I never rush my major projects. But when it comes to little like little skits or like videos that are not very long, I put those out there because I, or because it gives something for my for the audience to watch. So like you, like back when you did comic dubs, you your music was your main thing, but you put comic dubs on your channel to give something for the audience to watch. Yeah. Like, my original idea for Whirlwind Studios was to be able to be a a big multimedia project that was run by me, and um, I would, you know, basically put out voice acting projects, audio books, music, and um, as well as like uh, sound design or drum recordings and mastering and whatnot. Though that kind of still remains present in some degree. What I want to take Whirlwind Studios now is really use that name for a business. And the particular field that I want to get into, into applying that name, is uh, for mixing and mastering and studio recordings and whatnot. Um, that's just where I think I want to take the name and apply it to. I still want to do, like, pony stuff, of course, because Whirlwind Studios, you know, makes music. It's a music product. And I still would keep my Whirlwind alias, because I like that name. Uh, so that's what I want to do for the future, is really, like, brand myself and get my name out there to offer uh, mastering, uh, you know, offering clients to do mastering work or mixing work, because I like doing that stuff cool it's it's very good creating your own business like my girlfriend blaze she successfully created her own business with her wood carving and stuff like that so right it's yeah. it's cool that she um you and her and other people love have these agendas and want to take in their passions into business but they still keep mm -hmm. they never forget their roots what mm -hmm. what, what started them and I I think it's kind of awesome that you're willing to take this stuff you do, but take it up to the next level. Because in the world of business and recording, it's you gotta take it up to the next level eventually. You gotta get out of your com comfort zone. That's the thing about it. It's really challenging, but getting out of your comfort zone once you're used to it, it's a lot of fun. But never forget where you come from. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing like you with with me with Vision Wave Media. Mine is a multimedia thing as well run by me, but it's like a it's also like a anchor to the group channel part of Ben. So Vision Wave Media, but it does everything. It does stuff for the MLP community, it does stuff for non-MLP fans. I do pretty much everything. Music, whatever interviews <laughs> these are the newest thing <laughs> so uh yeah and i and this is the third episode and mm. i'm i'm like you down eventually down the line what i want to do with my studio is i want to do it to more of a business as well and hopefully like turn mine into more working on audio stories or original novels or music or sponsoring other upcoming youtubers by 
getting there by interviewing them or getting them out there so they can get more high up. That's what I want to do. But I'm never going to forget my roots. So, I feel you. I understand what you want to do. And I wish you luck with it. Good luck with that. And I support, I support you 100%, dude. Yeah, thanks, man. That's really nice of you. Anytime, bro. That's what I'm here for. That's what a friend's here for. So, is there any last things you want to say before we wrap this interview up? Uh, just thanks for having me. I'm glad to be able to talk this out. It was pretty chill. Glad I got to uh, be a part of your podcast. <laughs> and, uh, I'm excited to I'm excited for the future of what we're going to do. I think it's going to be fun. Sweet, bro. Yeah, like I said, I have a lot of plans for the future, and I hopefully one day you and I work on something really sick together again because it was always fun working with you. Um, yeah, okay then. Well, thanks for coming to uh, the interview. And everyone, check out Whirlwind Studios here. I will link all his social media where you can buy his music and stuff in the description of the video when this comes out. And subscribe to him. He's amazing. So until then, stay frosty, my friends. And I will see you in the next interview video. See you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> nice. That was great. That was great.